Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for coming to check out this video where I'm about to set up my February spreads for 2022. Um, this time we were researching Egypt and I've really delved into the ancient Egypt, which has been so much fun to research. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, thank you guys so much for the beautiful comments and the sharing of the videos that I've done recently. Um, lots of you seem to like my Venice painting last week. That was a big one. Thank you for supporting that and for being here um, all of last year and watching the Czech Republic from last time. Really appreciating all the feedback. So thank you so much. Um, and before we get started on today's setup, I just want to let you know that later on in the video, I will be choosing the country options for next month. And do remember to keep your eyes peeled for a particular animal, very highly regarded in Egypt on every page. <laughs> Let's get started. So as I'm preparing my first page of the journal, I just wanted to quickly show you a few of the pieces in my mum's place. Now she loves ancient Egypt. My uncle John actually built this statue here of Anubis, who's the God of the dead. And it's all done with fiberglass. He's an incredibly creative man. Um, so he made that. And then she's got these beautiful paintings on her walls of the great Sphinx of Giza and the Abu Simbel temple. So they're just a few things that I don't actually draw in the setup. So I just wanted to show you some of those pieces. So yeah, the love of ancient Egypt has gone further than the research from this month, but I did learn more than I've ever known about it during this research. So for our cover page for Egypt, I went for a kind of an obvious one, but I just couldn't go past it. When I picture Egypt, I picture pyramids, as I'm sure most of us do. So I had to represent them on the cover page. So these are the pyramids of Giza, which were built 4,500 years ago to honor the pharaohs of the old kingdom or very ancient times. And the middle pyramid in this drawing, the largest one, is the oldest and largest of the pyramids in Giza and in the world. It's the oldest of the seven wonders of the ancient world. And it's actually the only one to remain largely intact the same. So I was so impressed to hear the size of this pyramid and how it was how it was built, which we are still unsure of. Um, but the pyramid stands 147 meters high and was the tallest man-made structure until the Eiffel Tower. And that was built in 1889. So I'm not quite sure how we know this, but we know that there is 2.3 million large blocks of limestone and granite to build these pyramids. So one pyramid is 2.3 million blocks of stone which is just mind-blowing and that's why we've never been able to figure out how they actually built them. So for years they believed it was slaves that would um, build, that would quarry the stones up and you know build ramps to get them up but now we know that well, we believe that they weren't actually slaves they were skilled tradespeople doing this because they were given um, honorable burials so they wouldn't have done that for slaves. Um, they yeah so they believed that they were very skilled tradespeople and clearly they were um, but I personally still am not sold on that. I just, I don't, I don't know if that could have actually been done. So I'm going to go with my little fairy tale thoughts of that the ancient gods actually build the pyramids. So, I mean, I did automatically think of alien versus predator and maybe like the aliens built the pyra pyramids or the predators. <laughs> but um, I thought I'd go with these gods anyway, because I was so fascinated learning about the ancient gods and goddesses that I think it would make sense to portray it like that. So then I decided to put Hathor, who was a solar deity in the sky above the pyramids and like she's building them one block at a time with her large hands. So the solar deity Hathor was worshipped as the goddess of the sky, of women and of fertility and love, which I then thought was very appropriate for the Valentine's month. Um, she's depicted as a woman with cow horns or sometimes a cow head. I didn't really feel like I wanted to draw a cow head on this page, so I kept her as a lady with the solar disc in her crown and the crown's horns. Uh, so she's often depicted like that with these cow horns surrounding the solar disc. My idea is that our girl from this journal has jumped into an ancient Egypt book. She's learning all about ancient Egypt, the gods and the goddesses, and actually becomes the goddess. So she is Hathor in my mind here and she's building the pyramids and then what i wanted to do beneath the pyramids is i really wanted to get the nile in there somehow so although it's not placed in reality near these pyramids um, i just wanted to show that here purely because of how important the nile is for egypt and the world it's the longest river in the world running 6650 kilometers or 4132 miles and it goes through 11 countries and empties into the Mediterranean Sea. 
And now most of Egypt is made up of deserts, but the Nile is so fertile and is abundant with many crops. And the most common were wheat, flax and papyrus. It's also full of animals like hippos, eels, fish, cobras, turtles. But the one that sounded the most scary was the Nile crocodile, which can get up to six metres long. <laughs> now I have to share you this story that involves the Nile and the crocodile in ancient Egypt. So God Osiris was betrayed by his jealous brother Setch, who tricks him to lying down in a sarcophagus, pretending it's a gift. Setch then traps Osiris inside and throws him in the Nile. Osiris's body is eventually found by his wife Isis, who tries to bring him back to life. But Setch intervenes though and steals Osiris's body, chopping it into bits and scattering them across Egypt. Isis still tracks down every piece of Osiris, except for his um, genitals, which had been eaten by a Nile crocodile. <laughs> this is believed to be the event that created the fertility of the Nile and how beautifully abundant it can be with all that natural flora and fauna. And then Osiris, he couldn't come back to life without his whole body, so he became the god of the dead and lord of the underworld. So that explains a little bit of why I've got the sarcophagus floating down the Nile and why I've included all these elements. Uh, it's a bit of a full-on cover page and I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. It's very different to, thy, to my other cover pages. To thy other covers. I <laughs> sound ancient. Um, and I've also, I, there was something bothering me about the purple flatness of the Nile. So I end up using some washi tape over the top and that made me feel slightly better. Um, but still, I'm not 100% happy with how it's turned out. But I really like the fun and the sort of story that it tells to me. And I'm sure you've also noticed the Dutch door that I've created on it where I cut down along the pyramids to reveal a sort of galaxy sky. And that was sort of trying to state that the ancient Egyptians believed the Milky Way was um, thought to be a reflection of the Nile into the sky. So I just thought I'd do a little bit of a night sky there to sort of con contrast with the solar goddess as well. So there's the cover page and here's a bit of a closer look for you. So moving on to my next page, I had this really interesting shape to work with because I'd cut so harshly on those angles. And I thought it when it turned over, it was this perfect triangular shape. So I tried to use that, um, you know, really intentionally with what I wanted to draw on this page. Now this is my calendar page where I do just the monthly calendar and usually houses birthdays or important things to remember. And now the national animal of Egypt is called the steppe eagle. But instead of drawing an eagle, because I really wanted to keep portraying this ancient god style throughout the setup, I decided to portray the falcon god, which is Horus. Um, he was the magically conceived son of Isis and Osiris, and he was created to avenge his father's murder by Setch. So that previous story I told you, this is their son. Um, so hence why Horus is the god of war and hunting, because he was created to avenge that murder. And Horus lost his left eye fighting with Setch, and his eyes actually represent the sun and the moon. So in losing it, it became the mythical explanation of the phases of the moon, which is so cool. They had like an, they had a reason for everything. I love it. <laughs> so as I hinted at in the intro, I have drawn a cat on every page of this setup because of how important cats are. So although they're not the national animal, I just wanted to talk a bit about them and why they are so special to Egypt. Cats represented justice, fertility, and power, and they were known protectors of the pharaohs back in the day. They would kill venomous snakes and just be a general companion and protector of the pharaohs. Um, so there's a few deities that had the heads of cats, like Maftet, Bastet, and Sekhmet, to name a few. So I have portrayed one here, a black one with the gold. They seem to all have these statues where they've got gold earrings and necklaces on so I've added that in which goes nicely with my spread um, and I've also written the word Feb down the side of the page um, and I've got the little hieroglyphics there as well which I'll talk more about on the next page but 
yeah, I really love the hieroglyphics and that is what it would be if you were to just, you know, take away the actual English letters and just use those letters, that would be Feb. So as I'm here sketching out the main part of this, I was just loving how this was all being framed in this page and to use that triangle aspect to sort of illustrate Horace. I was super happy and I thought I'd keep this page black and gold because it just felt right. I didn't want to add too much color like I did with the cover page. So I just kind of pulled it back and kept it really quite graphic. Um, and I love how this page turned out. So I'm just finishing this up using my Pigma Microns and then I will show you all the closer details. Okay, now moving on to the next page, which is my, uh, actually normally it is my needs and wants page and my meal planner. But this time I've decided to do it differently because I'm just not using my needs and wants page at the moment. So I've decided to, from now on, change this needs and wants page to a gratitude list. It's something that I've always, we always talk about it at the dinner table, like what we were thankful for, for the day, or what was the best part of the day, things like that. But I've never actually written it down um, properly. So I wanted a space to do that. So on the left side of this spread is going to be my gratitude list. And I thought I would create a nice quote as well to remind me to be grateful every day as much as possible. Um, I think it's something that we're probably all trying to focus on these days. Um, and yeah, I just think it's really important and quite grounding. So if I ever feel a little bit uh, off or just, just wrong, I'll just try and bring it back and focus on what I'm grateful for in the world. So I think we should all do that. Um, but anyway, so that's what the page is going to be on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side is my meal planner page. So on this meals planner page, I actually, I'm kind of working them as one theme. So across this page, I am working on a papyrus kind of look. Now papyrus, as I mentioned, is the plant that grows abundantly around the Nile. Um, and they were the first people to use papyrus as the ancient writing tool. So they would um, write on these paper material made from papyrus plants. The ancient Egyptians also made um, lots of artifacts out of papyrus, like reed boats, mats, ropes, sandals, and baskets. So I made my background like a scroll of papyrus here, and then I included some hieroglyphics above the gratitude quote that I've found. Now this quote is a really good one, I think. It's quite simple and straightforward, but it just really struck a chord with me. And I guess that's because at times, you know, you do find yourself going, oh, I wish I had that, or I wish I could get more of this, or, you know, you're always wanting more. So by having gratitude, that turns what we have into enough and you can really appreciate what you've got. So I just really liked that quote, um, simple and to the point and is perfect on this page um, to start me off on thinking thankfully about the things and people and places situations in my life. Now this guy down the bottom of the page is called Thoth and Thoth was the god of writing and wisdom with the head of an ibis. So he was believed to have been the inventor of language and the hieroglyphics script. So I thought that was really appropriate for this page. Um, and as the god of wisdom, he possessed knowledge of magic unavailable to other gods, which is why he was actually able to fix the loss of Horus's eye. So another connection to the previous page, um, Horus's eye, when it was lost during the fight, he this Thoth was actually able to mend the eye um, because he was very, very knowledgeable. So I thought that really appropriate. And I've actually done some hieroglyphics on here that I believe represent the word gratitude across the top. And then down the bottom near the ibis or near the thoth itself is the word thanks in hieroglyphics. And they are so much fun to draw. I will definitely recommend giving them a go. And then of course, I cannot leave out my little cat. So I got him at the top poking over the meals planner. And to color this page, I'm using a few Tombow dual brush pens. And originally I wanted to, I kind of chose a color palette in my brain, which was going to be this mustard yellow, this nice lavender lilac sort of shade, um, and then perhaps like a green and a maroon. Um, so I did love that kind of color arrangement, but I was trying too hard to use it on every page. Um, so then 
in the end, I felt like it just looked a little bit, I don't know, bland or something. So I added some more. I decided to add some watercolor to this page and that's when it really made it for me. So I put a nice sepia toned, you know, it's still a mustard um, color covering this whole scroll section. And I think it gives you more of the effect I was hoping for, that ancient scroll feeling. And then I've just left the parts where I'm going to be writing my gratitude lists and my meal planners open so that they're nice and easy to write on. And if you really like this style of calligraphy that I've used on this page, um, I do have a worksheet for it called um, Love Letter and that is available from my website and there's a previous video showing me creating that as well. So if you wanna learn how to do this kind of calligraphy, feel free to check out the links in the description box. This next page, uh, if you've been with me for a while, you'll know is my mind map page and is usually my favorite uh, of the setup. And this time is actually no different. I really, really love how this page turned out. I, so much that I even made it the thumbnail for this video. Um, Cause as I said, I wasn't overly thrilled with my cover page, but I'm really happy with this mind map spread. So the lady I've chosen to illustrate on this page is someone very obvious when you think of Egypt, and it is the last pharaoh of ancient Egypt, Cleopatra. Now I totally found myself getting lost in the research of these ancient people, and it's so hard to relay the information that I sort of just drowned myself in. Um, so I will give you a brief summary of who Cleopatra was, but obviously I am no expert. But from what I believe is she was very well loved. She was an amazing ruler for her time and mainly because Egypt was thriving at the time of her ruling. Um, she actually wasn't Egyptian though. She was Macedonian, but she was born in Alexandria. So I don't know how that really counts. She was born there, lived there, died there, but obviously from a Macedonian family who ruled for 300 years over Egypt. Um, so she was the last one of those of that family to rule Egypt. And I guess I also read that because Alexandria at the time was considered Greek because it was a Greek city of Egypt. That's why she was more Macedonian Greek than Egyptian, I guess. I think one of the reasons she was so well loved by Egyptians at the time was because she really tried hard to immerse herself in Egyptian culture and learnt the language and brought riches to Egypt by encouraging trade with the Eastern nations. Yeah, she was very well liked. She was known to be beautiful, but there is articles saying that this is probably unlikely because she was the product of incest. Um, and speaking of that, she was actually married to two of her brothers when they were co-ruling Egypt. And then she had an affair with Julius Caesar, which produced her son or their son, Caesarian. And she also married Mark Antony and had three children with him. And although it sounds like she allied herself with Mark Antony for political reasons to keep Egypt separate from becoming part of the Roman Empire, I also like the thought that it is quite a romantic story between them because in the end, uh, Mark Antony actually committed suicide because he believed she was dead and she did the same um, once he was dead, she killed herself by poisoning. Although some people believe it could have been a cobra, a cobra bite um, that poisoned her. So yeah, I just think, well, you don't do that if you don't love the person, do you? So yeah, maybe it is, maybe it's a little bit more romantic than made out to be. And to be honest, I've never seen the movie Cleopatra and maybe that's how they have sort of gone with it. Maybe Hollywood, they've you know, identified it as more of a romance story. Uh, but I thought that was nice. So she was only 39 when she died and yeah, but she ruled and seems like a really important figure in the ancient history of Egypt. So she is the prime focus on this page. Now, instead of drawing the Queen of the Nile in a statue form or in one of the old art pieces, because we obviously don't really know what she looked like, I thought I would create her face as a modern day Egyptian beauty and then sort of put her in the attire of Cleopatra. So the face I've used for this Cleopatra drawing is actually that of a model and actress um, in Egypt called Tara Imad. Tara just seemed like the perfect choice for this because she is a well-known Egyptian actress and is absolutely stunning and probably could portray Cleopatra very well in a movie. She's involved in her own charity organization called Help From Your Heart Foundation. 
and that project distributes donations to families and children in orphanages in Cairo. Um, so I love to give a shout out to people doing good like that on the channel here. So yeah, um, good on you, Tara. And <laughs> that sounded so Aussie. I was torn whether to show Nefertiti or Cleopatra on this page. So she was my other option and she was known as the symbol of beauty and feminine power. And her name actually meant a beautiful woman has come. And her bust sculpture is the most famous artwork from ancient Egypt. Um, whenever I see it, it makes me think of Michael Jackson's film clip. Remember the time with Iman and Eddie Murphy? Do you guys remember it? Of course you do. <laughs> they play the pharaohs and it was so cool. So this whole time I'm doing all these illustrations, so many great movies and music from you know our time is coming at me. And as you can see on my little setup to the side, I have a Nefertiti statue there, like a little baby one. It's one of my mums that she's lent me for this. Thanks, mum. <laughs> um, and then the other one I wanted to include and tell you about on this page is the national flower of Egypt, which is the Egyptian lotus, which I thought was super cool. And the way they illustrate this in ancient art was always very graphically done. So like quite triangular and symmetrical and stuff. So instead of drawing a real Egyptian lotus looking thing I thought I'd stick with like a very um, yeah graphic display of how they used to draw the lotus so that's what she's holding on to and having a little sniff of <laughs> I also wanted to include the makeup on Cleopatra because ancient Egypt is where cosmetics were first invented so the coal eyeliner that they use around her eyes was actually invented back in the day in ancient Egypt so we can pretty much thank them for all of our makeup these days uh, but the difference is they believed them to have magical properties and they would say incantations as they put it on because of its antibacterial properties that fought off infection. So that would be nice if that was still happening today. Um, yeah, and here it is. Here's my final shots of the mind map spread. I'm really happy with it. I hope you like the vulture crown. That was my favorite part. And, and of course, nothing is complete without adding some beautiful gold jewelry. <laughs> And now moving on to the next page, which is my goodliness page. This is where I keep all my habit trackers and focus on a few core things for the month that I very rarely complete, I must say. My gosh, it's hard to complete these things. But I, I will keep trying. Every month I keep trying. And every time I do these setups, it's like a new reason to keep trying. Um, so that's why I keep doing them because I'm determined to one day cross off everyone. Uh, so this page I decided to focus on King Tut or Tutankhamun. He was only 19 years old when he died, but he ruled Egypt and was king since he was around 10 years old, which is, you know, unbelievable to me. My child is nearly 10. She's eight. But yeah, I can't imagine them ruling a country. Obviously, they would have had help. <laughs> but um, I wanted to show Tutankhamun because, well, he's just incredibly famous and I will talk more about that in a second but I also wanted to include mummies and mummification because when I think of Egypt that's what I think of and especially the movie The Mummy which by the way I was having so many flashbacks to with all the words I was reading and all the gods I was learning about I can hear them talking about them and um, you know Amun-Ra and you know all that cool stuff from that movie I loved that movie <laughs> Um, but yeah, so Tutankhamun's mummy was discovered in a tomb in the Valley of the Kings in 1925 and it was dated at being over 3,300 years old. Inside the burial chamber where they found Tutankhamun was a sarcophagus and that contained three nested coffins all inside of each other. So picture like a uh, matryoshka doll or a babushka doll, that's what I thought of, like when it's like a coffin within a coffin within another coffin. And the innermost coffin was made of solid gold and that contained the mummy of the king wearing his death mask. So the face that we always see, this one I'm drawing now, is actually the death mask that was on the mummy of King Tut. And that mask itself was primarily made of copper alloyed 23 karat gold. <laughs> so the mask is inlaid with colored glass and gemstones. And I never really looked into that. It's just this thing that you see all the time. Um, and, you know, I have a little sculpture of it there on my desk as well, my mum's. I've just seen this mask everywhere. I never really thought to look immensely into it. I think I did a project on it when I was in school because I do remember drawing it when I was really young. Uh, but 
yeah, it, it's just not something that you sort of research into. So that's once again why I love this project that I do each month um, because, yeah, just you find out random things and I just never really realised that this was made for him to be buried with. So incredible stuff. So to show that mummy mummification aspect of how they embalm bodies to preserve them as long as they can, I'm showing the linen that wraps the body and it's like it's revealing the death mask beneath, um, even though that actually laid on top. And then there was something that they did during mummification with a scarab beetle that sits on the chest or where the heart is on the mummy itself. It was usually wrapped beneath the, the linen and it was hung around the neck with gold wire and the scarab was held in a gold frame. The function of the heart scarab was to bind the heart to silence while it was being weighed in the underworld to ensure that the heart did not bear false witness against the deceased. And that's because the heart was the only organ they left in the body and that was supposed to be the truest example of how you were as a human and if you would make it into the afterlife. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty crazy stuff. Like, I loved learning about this. <laughs> the ancient Egyptians believed that the scarab represented the cycle of life was a symbol of birth, life, death and resurrection because of the dung beetle's revolving ball shape. And then the last things I added to this page was the cat as if it was um, pulling off that mummy and revealing Tutankhamun beneath and then she was done. And here is the final shots. And now we move on to the final page of this setup for my weekly spreads. I've been enjoying a Dutch door style for this particular set of pages. So I've worked out that there's 28 days in February and I did work that out at <laughs> stupidly at the last minute because I ended up getting all my dates mixed up as usual. Um, so I've just cut these pages out across horizontally so that I can have just the bottom section being my my description of each daily task and things like that um, and then cutting out the top bit and what I'm illustrating on this page is Egyptian cotton I automatically think of Egyptian cotton as well and learning that it was a crop that was grown along the Nile in that beautiful fert fertile lands thought it quite nice to mention um, and I did want to have this kind of fairy tale like feeling to each page I don't know if I've achieved it completely throughout this one but I did like the thought that one of the Egyptian cats was maybe sleeping on a cotton ball. You know, the cotton plant itself looks so cool to look at and they look like little cotton balls. So I thought it'd be cute if that was like a little cotton um, bed basket for a cat. So I've got this giant cotton plant that's coming up on the left hand side of my page and then done an Egyptian cat. Um, they're actually called an Egyptian Mao. They're also a small to medium sized short haired cat breed and I thought because it's a small breed it could go really small and end up on a little cotton ball. <laughs> and they also are pretty rare so there's only 3,000 or so worldwide. They are the fastest domesticated cats and apparently was one of the cats that Cleopatra actually had as well. I love playing with scale to make something seem a little bit more abnormal um, and I really liked making these giant cotton plants with this tiny baby cat. I'm colouring this page just using markers, so just my Tombos and a couple of Pitt Artist Pens um, by Faber-Castell and then my gold, adding that in, <laughs> looks a little bit funny. I was trying to add a gold element that you would find in the cat statues of ancient Egypt but it ended up kind of looking just a bit weird on the cat. <laughs> And then I wanted to add some spark of color. So I added in the sun and intentionally it was going to be the sun um, behind the cat, but there was something about the color really annoying me. I think it was the fact that I could see the streaks in the pens. I don't know if that bothers anyone else, but I just, I get really irritated using um, water-based markers because they make these streaks. So I ended up going over the top of that circle with a maroon color that I was trying to use throughout the spreads anyway. And I think that works a lot nicer, um, having that dark contrast between the cotton and the cat and the background. So I've just done that. And then last off on this page, on the right hand side, I've left a space for notes. So anything that I don't, um, that I wanna see every week of the month, I'll put in that section. 
And to decorate that, I'm still using that calligraphy, the love letter calligraphy that I talked about earlier. If you do want a worksheet for that, there is a link down in the description box. Um, but I've also put the Eye of Horus um, on the top right as well, just to decorate it, make it look a little bit more Egyptian on this page. And then the Eye of Horus, like we spoke about before, is when Horus's eye got injured in the battle. So when it was fixed, it became an amulet and, and it would sort of have healing and protective powers. So it was used to protect against disease and protection against disintegration of the embalmed body with the mummies. So I do love how all of these things that I managed to put in here were all connected. That was so cool about ancient Egyptian gods and goddesses. Everything was connected. So I found it so fun. I'm sure you can tell how much I enjoyed looking into Egypt. Um, I do realize that I really focused on ancient Egypt. I hope that didn't offend anybody, but you know, the current Egypt is still a beautiful place, but it just holds so much history that it's really hard not to mention it. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. I hope you liked it as well. If you did, could you please hit the thumbs up button down below this video to help me out and also subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. So every month I look into a country that you guys help me choose. And just wanting to thank my newest patrons on my Patreon channel who are supporting me over there. And they are Ellie H, Kiana P, Laura P, Kevin W, Priscilla, Janine M, Yvonne, Tasneem Z, Carolyn, Yang, Yana E, Nurit R, and Kelsey C. Thank you guys so much for joining Patreon. I really appreciate that. Hope you all enjoyed seeing this flip through. And now we can get on to choosing the country for next month. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing that setup, guys, of our exploration of kind of ancient Egypt. Um, and I hope you enjoyed all the cats that I tried to hide in every page. Leave me a cat emoji if you did enjoy the video, your favorite one down in the comments. And now I'm going to choose the country choices for March and you can leave me your favorite option there too. All right, so the first option, I'm gonna use this hand, which feels weird for some reason. Um, and I'm right-handed, that's really strange. Anyway, so not looking and I'm trying to choose one of the big countries, I have one, and we have Indonesia. That would be awesome. I have been to Indonesia, it's close by and it's an amazing place, so that would be fun to explore. Then we've got the middle countries, which is between 8 million and 30 million. Swiveling it around, we have one. We have the Netherlands. Ooh, that would be epic. Um, we did have that actually come up as an option and it narrowly missed out. So if you want to see Netherlands, don't forget to please place your vote down below. And I'll also put out a, um, a table, no, what do you call them? Uh, brain work. Um, a poll. <laughs> so, oh my God. We'll put up a poll as well so that you can vote on there to make sure we can get a clear winner. And then the last one, we have it, Mauritius. Ooh, I love these options. Mauritius, I would love to be there right now, having a swim in that crystal blue water. <laughs> okay, so we have our options. We have Indonesia, the Netherlands, and Mauritius. And then our last two from last time, we'll go back into the jars that missed out, which was Hungary and Albania. So thank you, Egypt, you were amazing. Thank you so much for watching. And yeah, don't forget to leave those comments down below, like the video and subscribe for more. Have a great week, I'll see you soon. Bye.